Okay, there it is. Okay, we'll uh, let's pray and then we'll get started. Um, okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you once again, Lord. Even as we've gathered together, Lord, we thank you that, um, Lord, where two or three are gathered, you are there in our midst, Lord. And um, we just acknowledge your presence, even as uh, we've gathered, Lord, online, digitally, Lord. We acknowledge your presence, and uh, we thank you that uh, you are here. Uh, speaking to us, um, doing things in our spirit that no human being can. And uh, I thank you that you are edifying us and um, Lord, putting things in our hearts, Lord, and taking things out. I thank you, Lord, that there is a, uh, it's a time of learning and unlearning as well. And uh, uh, we just yield to that entire process. And we just say, come, Lord, have your way in our lives, God. We thank you. And we come at this time uh, into your presence, uh, into your mighty hands. And I pray that you will have your way and fulfill your plans and purposes in our lives. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So hey, good to see you all back. Um, so we, this is a biblical preaching. And um, last session we looked at... Um, before we went into you know biblical preaching we wanted to look at uh, uh, interpretation right how do we rightly interpret it and the fact that um, uh, paul writing to timothy and uh, exhorting timothy and saying you know give heed to the doctrine uh, charge some that they teach no other doctrine that they do not give heed to fables and so on and and telling Timothy, rightly divide the word. And in doing so, you will save yourself and the others who hear you and so on. So we see a lot of importance um, that uh, that Paul gives to the, the word, the written word, and, um, and the rightly uh, dividing of it and the teaching of it and so on. And the reason is this, that uh, with the teaching of the word comes the revelation. And with the revelation, the conviction in our hearts, and with the conviction, um, each person, these believers move to action and, uh, you know, living. And uh, with that, we change the destiny. Our destinies are, you know, changed. So the, it, 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 all, it all starts with the, with the teaching and the revelation. So as we are uh, called, each one of us are uh, called to be preachers. Right? We saw that First Peter 2, and we see that uh, we are called to be uh, communicators. Uh, I think that's a, that's a word which a lot of us can resonate with, but all of us are called to proclaim, to herald uh, the message that God gives us, we are called to proclaim the virtues of him who called us from darkness into his light. So all of us are, are, are his mouthpieces. All of us are, like we see, you know, like we are called to be ambassadors of reconciliation. And each one of us, now um, there's no place for comparison because our call will be unique and i can guarantee you that each one of you um, you know will uh, uh, you know as you are submitted to god and as you're walking in step with god that you will be uh, salt and light that you will be mouthpieces that you will be ambassadors of reconciliation you know in your sphere of influence and um, and that's the place that's the greatest place that's the best place to be in the sphere of influence in the you know center of his will right um so while all that is uh, great, and we are looking at um, uh, some of the things, some of the basics, some of the foundational things now. So we don't want to put the cart, you know, in front of the horse. So we're just putting the right place here. So uh, we last session we dealt with the, the the interpretation and how to go about it. Some of those basic foundation and rules, um, you know, that you can use it as a ready recognize. Just go back to it time and again, and um, and today we are looking at. Um, uh, the introduction of homolytics and uh, it's in page eight in your notes if you can go there um, so we see that uh, homolytics the term itself is uh, it's, it refers to the science and art of of preparing and communicating or delivering a message right uh, a discourse you know what is a discourse a discourse is uh, it's it's simply a talk uh, that a, a preparation and talk about a particular topic, right? Um, it, it's a conversation. So the word homily, 
the Greek word homily refers to that. Um, and homos means a saying and homilos, the audience and assembly or a crowd. So in homiletics, we address all that and we call it a science. You know, some people say it's a science and an art. Uh, well, it is because there is some exactness to it in the sense, uh, you know, the, there is some specifics to it, which will actually help us communicate it really well um, and is uh, and we can call it an art because there is uh, you know there is creativity and God has actually given us that right uh, yeah human personality is involved in the communication of the message so just because a human being with a flawed human being right with all uh, uh, with the flaws in personality God chooses to use even that um, to communicate the message you know, if you look at the uh, the early church if you look at the disciples um, they were completely transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit well but they uh, if you look at uh, then as human beings they were you know they had limitations they had they were flaws they were uh, and, and so on but uh, the the power of God overshadowed their limitations, overshadowed their weaknesses. And, uh, you know, time after time, you hear testimonies of people. Um, and I, I remember I, I remember this testimony about uh, a person who, who was in YWAM, you know, youth with a mission. And uh, this teenager who shared the gospel with, uh, with this person, I forget his name, but I remember the incident that this person went on to become, uh, to really do great things uh, in ministry. Really, God used him in a mighty way um, to move about, uh, to bring about a move of God and so on. But the fact is that she came and shared the gospel, stumbling through her words. And, you know, uh, she, she, Share the gospel, and uh, in fact, it says that the girl went back saying, "Okay, that's that was the most terrible, you know, that the uh, thing that I ever did." But the fact is, the Holy Spirit used those words to convict this person's heart, and this person was ready and open, and uh, through that, he his life was changed. Right? So, um, well. God does use human personality. It is an art. We we, can, we, we are creative and we use our intellect and so on, but uh, always depending on the power of the Holy Spirit, both for inspiration and for the communication, right? Both for inspiration and the communication of the message. So uh, it was St. Augustine who brought these terms, you know, like homilia and somo, uh, sorry, sermo into the, um, into the church and, um, and from which we get the English words preaching and sermon and so on, right? So um, it's it's quite interesting to uh, you know to look at the history of uh, homiletics and how it was in the church, and probably you know you could uh, read that on your own. Uh, the plenty of online uh, resources you can just read that and see how in the early church that uh, people actually um, and how it came into being and. Uh, though it went to an extreme of uh, uh, you know the oratorical oratorical standards of those days you know, like uh, theater and drama and all that so the speech and everything uh, you know coming in a, in a certain form but at the same time there were there were preachers who were down to the earth, down to earth very practical and they said no this uh, art form which is there secular in, in secular uh, in the secular realm uh, or theater, you know, uh, we can only use it to some extent, you know. So there were people like Saint Augustine. There were people like um, I think um, the Bishop of Hippo. I forget the names, uh, but they were very careful, you know, um, in the communication of the message. They were very down to earth uh, in the preaching, um, which uh, of the gospel and uh, uh, and the teaching of the word, right? So. Um, I just wanted to uh, share a, a particular instance that happened, uh, one that I heard, uh, and uh, so two, two instances, one that I heard and another one that I experienced. Okay, so uh, is everyone ready for a couple of stories? Okay, um, the first one is something that I experienced. Okay, so this was in uh, a railway station, in a cantonment railway station, uh, not too far from where I stay, about five kilometers. So I was waiting for a train, and uh, it was uh, it was a night train. I was waiting for the train, and uh, I was sitting there with my luggage. Then I saw this um, 
this person, uh, uh, kind of senior gentleman, and uh, he had a mic. He had uh, actually his his team had a had a mic. Uh, he had a mic. His team had a you know like a portable loudspeaker, and he had the Bible with him and. Uh, and he was preaching like he was he was walking down the platform up and down and he was preaching he was dressed in white and so on senior but and then it was like a group of three or four people just traveling uh, walking with him and he was he was preaching but the fact is that um well he was using a lot of scripture he said you know he was talking um you know, you know a young man uh, you know he would say uh, what would it uh, what would it profit if you gain the whole world and lose your soul and and then he would just you know just keep moving on and some of it was barely audible right so but he was doing that and uh, then uh, when I experienced that, um, when I saw that, uh, people were doing their own things, right? People they were doing their own things, and um, some of them they just looked at it funnily and they said, "Okay, uh, is something happening?" Uh, okay, so I looked at it. One thing in my heart, you know, I really appreciated the fact that he was, you know, he was out there that night. It was pretty cold, um, and uh, he was a senior person, and he was out there doing that. Right? for uh, because he had a zeal and he wanted to do that uh, share the gospel but um i was just thinking about the effectiveness of it right effectiveness of it in the sense uh, i was thinking uh, was it effort in the right direction i'm sure that god will use it i was sure of that even that god will use but i was just thinking about the kind of effort put in and the kind of impact uh, that um, that was there right people were like, you know, people were just doing their thing, and I could hardly hear anything because he was moving on. And it seemed as if the agenda was, I'll preach the gospel uh, in the cantonment railway station, right? I'll preach the gospel, and, uh, you know, that evening I've preached the gospel there. Uh, and it was part of a checklist, right? I, I couldn't help but think of that. Okay, that was one scenario. Um, the other one was something that I heard that um, that in a in a busy bus stand that every every week um, I think it was a Thursday or a Friday every every week weekly once afternoon that uh, two people would come they would set up their sound system their audio system obviously it was in a place where all this was allowed so in India this was many years ago they, they would set it up and uh, and preach okay and and talk to the people talk, preach you know so, like um, some would it was a busy place some would stand and hear many would be walking by and uh, and so they would come they would they would preach for about uh, maybe 45 minutes or so non-stop and then they would pack everything and go okay so so this person who was actually watching this um, whole thing a couple of times and they went to ask them right um, you know what are you you know he was a believer too so he asked them what are you doing so then uh, they said no we are preaching the gospel and uh, said okay but uh, who's listening right um, so he said brother that doesn't matter you know we are called to preach and uh, whoever wants to listen can listen who wants to receive can receive but we, he will preach um, so uh, I was actually in a communication workshop and uh, many years ago and uh, and then uh, this person shared this so it's talking about to so both these instances where people were very sincere right people were sincere they had a burden they were very sincere no doubt about it they were well-meaning believers no doubt about it they had a burden they wanted to share the gospel no doubt about it uh, but the way in which we they went about doing it uh, raised the question you know, can there be uh, a better way right can there be a better way of engaging the people uh, with the gospel or sharing uh, from the word can there be a better way right so which uh, which brings us to this fact that when we prepare and uh, you know share um, we put in efforts to you know prepare prepare which does not 
which which uh, which is okay logically we put the material together we we are led by the spirit of god we want to preach what is the heart of god for that audience but you also want to take effort to to communicate in a manner that people receive right in a language that people receive that people understand and uh, in a in a way that reduces all uh, the the walls all the barriers you know as it is we know that the gospel brings ridicule okay we know that uh, uh, the gospel is offensive right and it would help if we would uh, communicate in a manner that uh, without adding to that right without adding already to the fact that the content is offensive but we we can do our best to not put up uh, barriers and not put up uh, you know uh, our own fences or our own uh, blocks for the people in order to hear okay so uh, what are we saying we are saying that uh, we it will be good if we get an understanding of um, you know of what basic communication is right what, what and and i'm sure that uh, most of you i see the you know i see the names here and uh, based on you know what you shared in the previous year and so on so i know that uh, you know some of you are involved in ministry most of you are and doing some for some sort of ministry some sort of sharing either online or otherwise right and so i appreciate that so some of the stuff that we are looking at today some of the basics of communication might be something that is already in place in your life right so it could be a repetition but um, i just felt that because it is very important um it it uh, it's 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 good if we go back to it right and uh, of course we have it in the notes it's good that we revisit it and spend some time on it okay so let's look at um, communication you know some of the basics of uh, communication okay so we know that um, uh, you know some components in the communication process is there is a sender uh, let's say if this classroom setting, there is of course a sender or uh, a messenger, uh, which is uh, in this case it would be me that I'm communicating the message. Uh, there is of course the receiver, which is uh, all of you, the audience, you are receiving the message, and then there is the message itself, the content of what we are, what I am sharing, which is uh, you know this class on biblical preaching and this topic about homiletics and introduction. So that's the content. Um, those are three basic components, right? But also there is a fourth element or a fourth component, which is the, the medium. Okay, here it is something that we're doing online uh, and the message comes to you digitally. It can be, uh, it can be a, a, a new, uh, you know, uh, something that is written, something that is um, you know done digitally or email it can be uh, it can be a book so uh, so there is also the medium okay so for us to understand that um, there is the speaker there is the audience there is the message and there is the medium okay so so we know that all these elements are there okay um, and uh, for us to know that okay as uh, communication uh, the process starts we know that it starts with the communicator or the one who is sending the message in the heart and mind of the communicator. Now that's um, that's important for us to know. So if I'm communicating, okay, does it start? Does it really start with me? You know, especially when it comes to uh, a message um, that we are sharing, does it really start with me? Uh, yes and no. Yes, it starts with us in the sense we are the ones who initiate that process we are the ones who are placed in that setting and we we share the message but it really starts in the heart of god if you look at it right if you look at the big picture you know it really starts in the heart of god and us engaging with the heart of god and uh, and getting that assurance that witness in our hearts that yes this is something that i can i want to share okay so um, yes it involves preparation but the the message you know the the process. When it, I'm, I'm talking, about, of course, about preaching. Uh, typically, it starts with the heart of God and us engaging with the heart of God and receiving that uh, a message, right? And going about uh, sharing it. Okay, so we have different means 
of uh, sharing that message. So, um, and since we are all you know, called to communicate the message, and we are all called by God in unique ways um, to to in 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 and place to and place in specific realms to communicate the message, the the way in which we communicate it. Uh, could be very, very different. It could be something that is written out. It could be something that is maybe sung. It could be something that is uh, that is preached in a formal setting, like a pulpit, church, ministry setting. Uh, we could have all these different methods uh, or ways by which the message is communicated. Okay. Um, having said that, there are certain barriers to communication. There are certain barriers, and it helps if we understand what the barriers are. Um, it helps for us to understand. And now, you know, more and more meetings are uh, are you know happening in an online setting. So, um, it helps for us to understand what the barriers are. I remember some of the some of you shared uh, and gave some very good feedback about um, the, the last year year end when we asked about okay. Uh, how can I be more effective in presenting? And you shared, uh, you know, I've uh, so I've taken note of that. Um, so to be more engaging, to have some, you know, so all this uh, 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 feedback. So, um, so the thing is for us to understand that uh, okay, this is the medium, and uh, in the communication process, there are bound to be some barriers. Okay, so if I understand that, then I can be prepared. I can be prepared beforehand, and if I understand, I can identify the barriers. You know, as I see it cropping up, I can identify the barrier and probably troubleshoot it. Right. So, um, so let's look at some of the barriers. Okay. So, um, some barriers could be um, uh, the language, the poor language itself. You know, the language itself could be a barrier. Like if I speak a different language and you speak a different language and there is a disconnect straight away. Okay. I, I remember, um, you know, it's one of the meetings we had uh, a few years back. And, uh, and uh, yeah, at the beginning of the meeting, uh, the first message, I think, uh, yeah, I think I was sharing that. And then we just went full on, um, you know, shared for about forty-five minutes, and uh, and then we finished. We thought, oh, I, I thought, okay, I think it was received well. People were attentive and all that. Um, what we what we did not, what we failed to do, is to check whether people needed translation, right? And that was the day one. So, uh, and during the course of the day, we we asked and uh, said, okay, do you need translation into you know Hindi and other languages? And then a lot of hands actually went up. Okay, um, so um, then we realize that maybe the first message may not have gone on, you know, really well. People were attentive, people sat, but to what extent did they actually, you know, receive the message that was shared? So the language itself, okay, um, uh, that it needs to be the right language so people understand and so on. Um, but the other thing within language itself is. Um, the uh, several other things like the rate, rate of speech, uh, or maybe um, you know a, a lot of things like what I'm doing right now, like um, uh, mm, uh, which could actually uh, distract a person from receiving the message. Um, so within the language itself, that could be a barrier. Um, then the level of volume. If I'm speaking too soft, or if I'm speaking too loud. Uh, that can be a hindrance. That can be something that uh, that doesn't help. That's a distraction. Um, and also, uh, some of the things like in the environment, if there is a lot of noise. Okay, um, I don't know if you can hear, but I'm actually in the third floor, uh, and uh, there's a lot of wind. Okay, so even though the windows are this window is closed, but um, there is a shush that's uh, that's coming in. Um, so I think because the mic is close uh, to me, you can't hear it. But there is a you know constant uh, blowing of the wind, and it's pretty strong. Um, so I just closed all the windows, and and it, even through the cracks, you can I, I can hear it, right? Um, so it it can be a situational and environmental noise. Maybe um, how many of you have preached and you uh, you have a baby crying in the background? Anyone? You can just put your hand up. 
uh, you share the word <laughs> yeah baby crying in the background and uh, subhajit okay sam um and uh, and the worst thing is uh, yeah siddhant um worst thing is everybody's turning there right everybody's turning towards a child and um, kennedy okay everybody's turning towards a child and um, uh, and the parents are blissfully unaware in the sense uh, parents are fine you know this is what the child does you know i'm not doing anything i'm just sitting there and uh, the child is crying and uh, and you're just hoping you know uh, i hope somebody takes the child out <laughs> yeah, you know people are turning around and and some people are you know uh, saying all those suddenly they are talking all these baby language and they saying kuku aju juju and all that and then they're trying to pacify the child and and here you are trying to share you know it can be very really distracting um but at the same time i I've, i've seen some preachers you know no matter what's happening around you know the uh, the earth could be uh you know falling the earth could be shaking they're just they're just preaching away you know uh it's 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 a real treat to watch such people you know preach they're not they they're just unmoved by all that's happening but the fact is that uh, environment right um, it also uh, it plays an important part so um, yeah one needs to adapt one needs to troubleshoot okay so the other thing is uh, um so, uh, there could be many other things but i'm just you know sharing a few things poor delivery poor preparation um so if i'm not prepared then i'm constantly uh, double checking thinking um about the message to be preached and it's um, it doesn't have the flow that is supposed to have and uh, maybe there are too many pauses in between and between sentence 1 and sentence 2 and um, and people have started looking at the time people are looking at their notes people are looking at their phones and uh, you know or it is too fast too rapid and people are uh, have lost track like what is he sh- saying what is she saying so these are some things which um, which don't s- seem to be very spiritual yes or no right they're not uh, they're not spiritual in the sense they don't seem to be spiritual but the fact is they influence or obstruct certain times um the spiritual act of preaching maybe there is prayer maybe there is worship and things that are in the natural in the environment they they kind of cause uh, a distraction or act as barriers so as much as possible you know uh, for it's good to, for us to be aware so we can be prepared beforehand um and it's good for us to work on it right okay uh okay till here anything that you guys want to add to it you know maybe uh share about um, you know uh, in the physical environment any other thing that uh, you've noticed uh which can be a distraction yes yeah, i'm go ahead please um thank you thank you pastor um now i think um is just um the world that we live in now um limits our uh, attention span mm-hmm. and this wasn't this wasn't uh, in the case of problem appearance or even 20 30 years back you know uh and i i keep having these kind of conversations with my mom dad and anyone else like like the maximum my our parents would like when they were sitting in for a sermon or listening to a preacher the maximum they would battle is uh, probably some news they heard over the radio in the morning that also not everybody had to use uh, but now you know uh, i think we are bad like uh, when we're sitting the preach i mean i i look around and uh, there's so the preacher is preaching away but then uh, there's constant whatsapp buzzes happening uh, instagram feeds being uploading facebook likes coming in mm. and uh, and there's all we have this really you know, really especially the youth that's coming up i think mm. uh, they, they're not coming in with a free space mm-hmm. so that's i think that's a new added component uh, yeah which which i th- for me it it um i see it as an opportunity for the way we teach i know for right. the fact that like you know when we talk about communication or 
a lot of people would agree that it has it's it's best if it's two way there is uh, you know both and to that i feel like a long preaching mm. even more than 5 10 like we really, I, i i think if someone goes uh, on stage especially if you don't have visual i mean you you see the person on stage and the person is really blessed um you know i've seen you i've seen uh pastashish and you can like you know there's uh, you can hold the audience uh, at least the, the major population of it but even then it's so easy to sit in the audience and you listen it's so easy to zone out right so, Yeah, so those are yeah, those are some added components, like you said, Sam. Yeah, increasingly the attention span is, uh, you know, uh, among certain groups of people, maybe the younger generation, it's 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 really reducing, and and not not just the younger generation, you know, it could be the older folks also. Uh, but the uh, yeah, that's how it is. That's how uh, you know things are presented in the media as well so yeah so those are things to be mindful of when we uh, preach and uh, share and also to be aware of uh, you know what is the best method possible um, yeah you're right you're right so so we, you have a presentation you have you know you mix up uh, those things so that you um, grab the attention of the person yeah you do that um, okay anyone else um, uh current challenges uh maybe in the environment you know as you communicate a message share a message okay go ahead uh, rupa thanks sir uh, i our fellowship most of them are on duty because they are working in the hospital and when they attend the meetings i hope i you can hear me sir yeah i can hear you yeah go ahead yeah sure so i uh, we have uh, followed a rule that those who are on due on call will sit at the back of the church not in the front and they'll they'll have it in vibration mode so that when they get a call or something they'll go outside and others will not be disturbed mm-hmm. and with the children also we made a provision that the small children with mothers will have an enclosure right. so that people will not be disturbed during the uh prayer and also i i make it a interactive most of the time so that we make it interactive so that people will not attention span will not be losing mm. even children i make them i involve them mm-hmm. if they come to church so giving them a portion to read or asking them relevant questions so that they will not be feel left out or uh, yeah and and a certain uh, not to bring uh, eatables inside the mm. church because <laughs> we, i tell them you don't take eatables into into the classroom so we are in a holy place we don't have to drink and eat during this small uh, span of time we'll give this time we'll honor god by giving this time not eating and drinking we are not fasting but at least restraint because if one child starts eating the other one will be disturbed Yeah, so yeah. i make it a it's a it's because it's a small group it's easy for me i for me i think okay because okay. it's around 70 people it's easy to no. manage bigger so groups are, yeah bigger groups it will be difficult yeah. so i think so yeah and 70 is a big uh, i mean it's a sizable crowd yeah uh, good thank you thanks sir. for sharing that thank you thanks yeah actually when you when you mentioned eatables i was reminded of uh, my first um, or the second uh, you know ministry with the children and uh, that was a very defining moment for me to decide that that was children's ministry was not for me so i'll probably share that another time uh, but yeah thank you thank you for sharing that okay let's 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 move on and um, the other thing that we understand is that uh, you know let's say we have how many people here 28 people here and um, you know the way um, 27 of you receive a certain message that is being shared is very different it's going to be different right because certain t- certain things would uh, would be emphasized would be highlighted uh, of course uh, god is making real certain things to your heart 
right? And uh, he knows the need of each and every person. So he's, uh, you know, highlighting certain things, quickening certain things, and, and even things that the speaker did not even plan or uh, uh, plan to emphasize. And he or she just mentions that, and the Holy Spirit just takes hold of that and, you know, uh, puts that in our hearts. So that's, that's a beautiful part, right? Beautiful aspect that despite our words, God is speaking, right? And with our words that God is having, the Lord is having a parallel conversation with each one of us. And that's a, that's the greatest re reassurance that any speaker can have, you know, saying, Lord, I, I didn't prepare, please forgive me. And, but I know that you're speaking that even as I speak and whatever I, you know, I'm bringing, uh, I know that you will speak, you know, that's a great thing. But, but over and above that, each of us, because of our experience and uh, and uh, and the stuff that we have gone through, and uh, maybe your you know your temperament that morning. Oh yes, Beth um, <laughs> uh, shared about Eutychus falling asleep during Paul's uh, discourse. Absolutely, and Paul just went through the night. I think he was a powerhouse. So much revelation just coming out, overflowing, and he just shared that and. Poor Eutychus fell asleep, fell from the top floor, but didn't die. <laughs> yes, he didn't die. Yes, sir. Uh, that was again an uh, you know uh, an opportunity for the power of God to be displayed. He didn't die. Yes, but the fact is that you know all of us have received the word through our filters. You know, maybe it is language, maybe it is uh, uh, culture, maybe it is our life experience. So we receive that. So um, the way it is perceived, the, me the, the message is very subjective, you know, the way it is received. So it helps to understand the audience, you know, it helps to, um, to see what kind of a, uh, audience uh, it is um, that you are actually speaking to. Right. That's that's a the very important thing. Right. Um, many times it's a it's a mixed group. Maybe people from different walks of life, uh, different levels of education, different um, you know, uh, different eth ethnicities. Like like in our class, right? Yeah. So, but we will have some commonalities like that. Um, you know, I can talk about. I. Uh, I cannot go too much, um, you know, talk about the local things or be very colloquial about things here in Bangalore or India or, uh, you know, which which might go, uh, which might not really resonate with you, right? So there is some common ground, and 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 that's the that's the thing that we could you know use. So uh, we need to be aware of that, right? Uh, so the fact that uh, it will be perceived a little differently, so you be aware of that. Okay, if I use this illustration, uh, how is it going down, right? If I, if, if I use this, uh, for example, you know, I, I remember we went for an outreach to a college and um, now this was a very, very strict college, uh, Christian uh, management, but the, the hostel did not have, uh, you know, no television, uh, no, of course, this is before the days of internet and uh, I mean, internet being widely prevalent or before the days of smartphones. So, um, so we went to this college and the speaker, um, we went for an outreach for an evening uh, time. And then the speaker actually is talking about, you know, I'm sure you must be watching television. I'm sure you must be watching this match. You must be following this. And everybody's you know, staring at the speaker. And uh, and he was like, uh, what? You guys don't watch television? Then everybody said, no television. <laughs> the hostel, you know, they, they, they did not have television and they were not, uh, they did not even get newspapers. So it was kind of a very, um, you know, kind of very restrictive kind of an environment. So, so then the preacher said, "Okay, uh, sorry, long, wrong illustration. It doesn't work here." Right. So you be uh, aware of this. That um, if I share this illustration, this is a great illustration, and it's it's good. It really brings out the truth. Um, but how is it going to be perceived? Right. If I'm, uh, you know, so you. Uh, that, that's the thing, you know, just to be sensitive, to see um, how is uh, uh, it's going to be perceived. Uh, the other thing is also to be aware of the response of the congregation. 
okay it helps you understand um okay now this is very very difficult right uh, when you're doing online i'm just going by faith um i know some of you must be lying down some of you must be uh, walking around maybe you got the phone i mean the um the the mic on uh, you know you're, you're listening right and but then you must be doing you i don't know yeah. but uh, so it's a very difficult thing when you don't see a uh, response but uh, over a period of time of course you know that okay this is this is a class these are good people they are listening <laughs> and so on but i remember once speaking to a congregation which was um uh which was uh, uh, which was not a like a um i don't want to mention the background but but the fact that they were not um they were not indian but they were also not uh, you know a city uh, kind of a thing but the fact is that you know i would look at them and uh, and then share you know something you know um, and and ask them something it says you know lay aside all malice and all envy so i want to ask you you know have you laid aside and i'm looking at them and they would quickly turn their eyes away <laughs> okay they just avert their eyes so uh, and uh, i'm like i'm smiling i'm trying my best but nobody is making eye contact can you just believe that so i i felt that uh, maybe i'm doing something wrong god um, maybe you didn't want me here today i'm doing something. but i just went through and then i realized that with that ethnic group to look into a person's eye especially if is um, you know a, a spiritual leader or a senior person to look into their eye uh, would mean disrespect okay uh like over a period of time if you're, if you're just looking if you're staring if you're looking at them it would mean disrespect so they would quickly avert their eyes to avert their eyes means respect and and i'm i'm you know uh, looking for a response maybe they'll nod their head or you know say a hallelujah or amen and but yeah the, the culture was that um they they would they would avert their eyes and uh, they would uh the fact is was that they were actually receiving but i but i was i wasn't aware of that so it helps right? it helps to know uh people's life orientation what is the oh, uh you know how are they responding um maybe sometimes people when you know that uh, you look at the expressions you realize that what you shared uh is people are very expressive right i remember in bible college uh, i think this was uh, yeah when we had the in person classes there was this girl uh who would always you know uh, in the sense if, she, if there was something that she did not understand did not agree with uh she would you know make that expression and i would immediately know that there was a problem and maybe if she had it maybe two others also had it so you know it was time to stop it was time to just slow down and ask a question uh, and say you know uh, did you get it uh, you know so um so when you look at the audience you look at the congregation and based on their response if people are um, so all these things we're going to look at it uh in in our uh, other classes also when we talk about the presentation body language expression and so on but uh, these are some basics so we're going to we're just looking at this and uh, um, the other thing is also um that there could be verbal and uh, non-verbal cues that with which we communicate you know our communication is verbal at the same time our communication is also non-verbal you know there are expressions there are tones uh, that indicate something that is communicating something um, and i remember that there was um, i had preached the i had shared I, I think i shared with you guys i'm not sure but i shared i finished a message finished the service then this person came this wasn't from the congregation he came and said pastor you know i like i like the message i like your content but uh, the way you speak you know you speak in a monotone and um, you know i it's putting me to sleep he said i'm really sorry but it you know i your content is good but then uh, the way you speak it's putting me to sleep and 
I was so glad that he actually took the courage to say that. And after he said that, he was actually, he felt very bad. Uh, you know, he, he was like, uh, I'm so sorry, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I apologize and all that. And I said, no, 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 it's it's good. It's good that you told me that. And uh, I received that, you know, I'll try to change. I don't think I've changed very much, but I am conscious of the fact that if I speak in a monotone, I'm putting people to sleep, right? So I try to change that. So the response of people, Non-verbal communication is more than, yeah, absolutely. Um, I see. Albert Mahabian. I see. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Sam. So you understand, You we pick up the cues uh, from you know the expressions of people, uh, whether they are guarded, whether they are, you know, um, uh, whether they are open and so on. So uh, we'll, we'll study that as well. Um, Okay, so I think that's all we have time for, but let me just uh, finish with a few other things that the language, the functions of language, okay? Uh, we, we can use language to report information. Right? We can, like uh, how a news reporter would, you know, you're using language, but you are doing several things there. Uh, you can report information, you can get information, right? How an interview would be, uh, you can, use language to interrogate and interview and receive, get information. You can use language to give orders, instructions, direct, right? you give direction, you can use language for that. And communication, um, in our, when we use the language in our communication, we can actually direct, we can uh, get information, we can report information. And we can also, you know, give vent to our feelings, right? When and it all happens with language. We give in to our feelings. We we say we can express that we are happy, we can express that we are sad, and we use language for that. And also, uh, another important thing is to understand that the language that you use, the words that you use, and what you communicate, it evokes certain response from the people, like certain emotions from the hearers. And um, well, God has instituted it this way so that. We can, you know, we can maybe praise him. We can, we can laugh together. We can cry together, and uh, we can be inspired and motivated together. But know that it's a, it's a two-edged thing. You know, you can use it to manipulate. You can use it to intimidate people, and also you can use it in edifying ways, like to, to uh, exhort, to edify, to motivate, to inspire, um, and so on. Right. So. Um, Okay, so with that, we'll close. We'll stop here. Um, if you have any questions, you're always welcome to, you know, uh, based on today's class, you can put it in the uh, in 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 that link, in that Google Doc, and then uh, we'll continue next class. Okay, so thank you. Have a great weekend. God bless you all. Bye. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. I see you. Thank right. you. Bye-bye.